All right, we're going to learn JavaScript events today. And JavaScript events, in my opinion, are really where JavaScript starts getting fun because you get to interact with the user as they interact with the page. So what an event is, is that's anything that the user does to interact with a web page. So if I were to click here, that's a click event. If I were to mouse over here, that's a mouse enter and a mouse leave event when I leave. So we can listen to these events. It's called listening to these events. And we can react and interact with the user. So let's kind of get into what these events are. I'm going to show you, I basically have this add numbers here. That's basically a paragraph uh, with an input called num1 and an input with the idea of num, ID of num2. And then we have a paragraph with the idea of add sum. So it's probably clear what we're going to be building here is whenever they change add one and add two, we want to create the sum. Yay, sounds easy enough. So let's go ahead and build this out. If you remember from our prior lesson, we do selectors to actually grab an element. So let's actually get num1 here. Num1 equals document dot gets elements by ID. And this is num dash one. There we go, and let's get num2 as well. Num2, there we go. Now let's go ahead and get sum while we're at it. Add sum is add sum. I believe that's add dash sum. Let's make check. Yep, add dash sum. Okay, so we've gotten our elements here. And to add a listener, it's very simple. You just take your element and do add event listener. And then your first argument is the name of the event. So let's do a click event. And then this function will fire or execute every time that event takes place. So let's just console log, uh, hi. There we go. I have live reload going, so this just refresh. So now when I click, it console logs hi. There you go. You can see it going. Let's, really, let's actually make it alert hi here. Hi. Hi. Okay, let's do some other events here. Let's do a mouse enter. So now whenever I enter it, oop, oh, hi, hi, okay? How about a mouse leave? So I'm in and I left and then I get the hi. Uh, some other events are focus uh, and that's going to be whenever I whoop, focus on it. There we go, that's a focus event. And now I can't get away. And then a blur event, oh, not blue. Blur event is going to be whenever I leave that element. Let's see if I can get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Some of those events are actually tricky to get out of when you're doing alerts. So there's a focus and let's blur. Blur. Hi. There we go. So here's kind of a list of events. You got click, mouse enter, mouse leave, mouse down is when your mouse clicks down. Mouse up is when you let it back up. A click is when the browser actually registers that you clicked. Because, you know, if you hold it down real long and then you let go, that's not going to register as a click. So click is only when it's fast enough to be a click. Mouse up, mouse move is when you're actually moving over it. It will actually send your coordinates of your mouse back. Key down, key up, those are actually your keyboard events. Blur and focus, we already covered them. Here's your full list of events, which I'll include in the description. As you can see, there are a lot of them. The ones you'll probably want to focus on are the mouse events. Some of these are called mouse events. And then some of them are called keyboard events. And those are the ones you tend to use the most. Where are those keyboard? There you go, keyboard events. These are the ones you're going to use the most. I'll put that in the description again. And let's actually get into building this little addition program. So what we want to do is we actually want to just add an input event, which is whenever anything changes in the value of our input. This will work all the way back to, I think, Internet Explorer 9. So on the input event, we want to do some... Uh, addition. Now, it's generally not the best practice here to create a function. It's usually a better practice to insert a function that's been created here, like add. And then this is just going to do add. So whenever the input event fires, we're going to run the add function, which is created right there. Uh, that's good for several reasons, which I can get into more later on. One of the reasons is now I can fire that whenever either of these run. So whenever the num1 has an input event, I can run add. And when num2 has an input event, I can run add. So that's one reason alone that it's great to pull it out. Uh, so that way you can share this function between multiple elements. That's kind of a good practice. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually get our two values. Var1 equals 
uh, num one dot value. That's going to be the actual value. Two equals num two dot value. Let's console log both of these. One two. A B C D E F. So there we go. We have our two values. Excellent. Um, and then let's actually add some. We want to change the inner inner HTML. Add some inner HTML equals one. Actually, we'll just uh, so yeah one plus two. So let's go check it out. We got twelve and we have twenty four and we got one two two four because anything that comes in from an input is a string type. It's not a number type. So how you convert that from a string type to a number is just go parse float. So that's going to parse it into a floating number. Floating integer, floating number, I forget exactly what it's supposed to be called. So let's do 12 and 35. Okay, 34. Okay, so that works, but if you notice, when this is empty, it says non, which means not a number. That's because we just tried to parse undefined as a number. So what we can do here is we can do an or zero. These little double bars mean or, which means if this value is basically null, undefined, non, which is not a number, then it's going to say, okay, that doesn't exist. Let's use the or value instead. So I could say null or zero, and I could do null or zero, and basically one would equate to zero and two would equate to zero. So really how this pans out to be is, if this doesn't create a number, we're gonna use zero instead. If this doesn't create a number, we're gonna use zero instead. So there we go, let's try this now. 34, excellent, it did 34 plus zero, and then plus one for 35. All right, there you go, we did our little number addition. And let's do a little maybe your sum is and of course, this will actually do something tricky as well. Three, four plus two, four. Why did that do that? Well, because as soon as we start adding a string to numbers, then it can't do that. So it adds a number plus a number. So kind of the way you get around this is go sum equals one plus two. Ah, two numbers together. I can do that, JavaScript says. And now we can add sum in there. So that'll work. 34 plus two, excellent. Um, and another way that you could do that is you could just go parentheses like that, one plus two. And so that will do whatever's inside of the parentheses first, so that's a number plus a number, that'll work. And then it will add that number plus the string, in which case it will turn them all into one big string. So I'll just leave it like that, it's a little bit cleaner if, I, if you ask me. Excellent, so there's our addition. Our addition is working. Thanks to click events. Uh, so let's go ahead and do maybe one more example here. I'm gonna turn off this HTML and turn on this HTML. So what I have here is I have a list of LIs and I have a list of images. Now the images have a class of hide, which means they're hidden. Up here, my class hide in the CSS is display none. So I basically wanna be able to click on this A tag um, and then I want that to show an image, actually show it and hide it. So let me go ahead and save this so you kind of see what we have here. So we have Simon Cowell, Bruce Willis, and Ben Carson. Three great guys, of course. And then uh, basically I want to click on one of those. And so I've added an href of pound. Pound will just by default just reload your same page. It doesn't really matter what we put in href because we're going to be returning false, which means we're going to cancel this out. It's never going to go anywhere. So if that was google.com, it's not gonna go to google.com. We're actually gonna cancel that out, but it's good to put something in there. So by default, if you have a link that you're gonna be canceling with JavaScript, just put pound in there. So we have ID of Simon, ID of Bruce, ID of Ben, and then our images we wanna to toggle are Simon pick, Bruce pick, and Ben pick. Okay, let's go ahead and build this out. Let's get rid of this JavaScript. Uh, I will put that in the description on maybe CodePen or something for you for a little bit later. Uh, but for now, we'll get rid of that. And let's go ahead and grab that Simon element. Where Simon equals document dot get element by ID. And then this is just Simon. There we go, and let's get Simon pick. Uh, 
Simon dash pick, I believe. Yeah. There we go. So when Simon is going to get an event listener, click function. So whenever Simon gets clicked, we're going to run this function. Um, if Simon pick class name. So if it has the hide class, uh, then we're going to remove it. Dot class name equals, there we go. So basically if it has a class name hide, we're going to remove it. So let's go ahead and click. Hey, there he is. And then else we're going to put it back on. So there we go. Now it's going to toggle. There he is. There he isn't. Okay, excellent. So now let's do the same thing for Bruce Willis and Ben Carson, and then we'll make this app a little bit cleaner. So let's get everything that says Simon and change it to Bruce. I'm using Sublime Text multiple cursors here. Um, Sublime Text and a lot of text editors have this Control D or Apple D or Command D, I guess. Um, that's going to automatically select all the same stuff so I can change it, which is awesome. What a, and we got Ben Carson. So Simon did that. Let's do Bruce. Let's find everything in here that's called Simon. Bruce, it just makes it so much faster to do this stuff. And then Ben. There we go. We should have all three. Simon, Bruce, Ben. Let's see what happens if I click a couple of them. Yeah, now they're both showing. Eh, that's something we can deal with a little later. Okay, so all three of them are in here. But I don't like this for a lot of reasons. One, this is a lot of almost identical code. There's this thing that coders talk about all the all the thing all the ugh, all the time called dry dry code don't repeat yourself i almost said do not don't repeat yourself d r y dry code this is not dry code because uh, there's all this repeating this is basically exactly the same thing as this which is basically the exact same thing as this that's a really bad idea so we actually want to find a way that we can share all this uh, so let's go ahead and create a new function here. I'm just going to go ahead and mute you guys out. Uh, and let's actually do a new function. So add event listener. I'm just going to actually copy you. Let's get one function that everybody can share, that everybody can use. We'll call it pick link. There you go. So now Simon can listen to that. And Bruce can listen to that, and Ben can listen to this. Excellent. So now PickLink can kind of do all of this at once. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Right, there you go. Get you guys some space up there. PickLink. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we're actually going to get it. One thing that's interesting about an event listener, let me go ahead and just uh, console log this for you. Basically, when we start sharing stuff, we don't know who got clicked on. So we don't know if we clicked on Simon, Bruce, or Ben when we fire this function. So we have to look that up based off of this. This will be the element that got clicked. So this will be Simon. If you clicked on Simon, the value of this will be Bruce. If you clicked on Bruce, well, here, I'll just console log it so you can see. There we go. So this is my A for Simon. If I click on Bruce, then I'm console logging this. Then that's going to be Bruce Willis. B is going to be Ben Carson. So what I've done here is you'll notice I've added this data-img attribute. So you're free to use with HTML 4 or 5 data-anything you want. So I just called it img because this is going to be the ID of the image that I want to toggle when I click on Simon. You'll notice that this has the ID of Simon Pick. And so basically when I click on this link, I want to toggle Simon click. So I added data image of Simon click, data image of Bruce pick, sorry, Simon pick, data image of Ben pick. So I'm actually going to snatch that out. So here's kind of how that'll work. I'll go over pick. Instead of before I was automatically looking at Simon pick, Bruce pick, or Ben pick. Well, now I don't know which pick it is. So it's just going to be ver pick equals document dot get elements by ID and I actually want to snatch the attribute out there out of there so ver pick ID equals this dot attributes so this again is my a link that got clicked on and I want to look at my attributes list and I want to grab data dash 
img. So I can't go data dash img. That's bad syntax. That's going to, it's data minus img. So there's another way that you can access attributes is I can do this. And so that's gonna be the data img. Uh, so I can also do this, attributes. Basically you can use it to access any value you want. So I don't need to do that for attributes. I can do the cleaner version, which is this way. This dot attributes dot data img is basically what I'm doing, dot value. So I'm going to get the value out of the data img attribute. And so pick ID, let's go ahead console log pick ID. Make sure I got this runner right. So there you go, Simon pick is the ID I'm getting, Bruce pick, and Ben pick, awesome. So now I just have to do pick ID. So I'm getting my element. This is the pick that I want to show. And now I just have to kind of copy and paste this code here. Let's copy and paste this. Get rid of my comments. Let me toggle it over a little bit. So now I'm just doing pick. If pick.class name has hide, get rid of it. Excellent. This should totally work. Let's see. Simon's working. Bruce is working. Ben is working. So now what we did is it took a little bit of figuring out, a little bit of reworking, but look how much shorter my code is now. So I've added three listeners. I don't need you. I don't need you. And I don't need you. Excellent. That's a very simple code. And this is good for several reasons. One, I'm only creating one function. So I'm using a little less memory than if I created three different functions. And now any future functionality I want to add into my program, it's all I have to do is change this one function and all three of them will get the results. So remember that problem I had earlier where if I click on several, I see them all. Well, what I want to do is I actually want to hide every image. Um, I want to actually hide every image that's in existence on the page first, and then I want to show everything. So I'm going to go document dot query selector all image there we go and then I would basically loop through that I could go over image all images and then I could loop through all images and I could tell each image to have a class of hide and then I could run through the rest of the code and show the one that I want to show I might as well do it for you, right, since I just told you about it. Let's do a for loop, var i equals zero. Remember that for loop and how annoying they are? You just gotta keep doing it till you remember how to do it. i is less than all images dot length i plus plus. Man, it takes a while to remember that for loop. Basically, I'm just gonna go through i as many times as it takes. All images, i, so I wanna get the image that I'm looking for. Uh, let's see, dot class name equals hide. So I'm going to add hide class name to every image on the page, and then I'm going to go through with the rest of my program. Let's see if this works. Oh, it works. Excellent. Excellent. That is exactly what I wanted it to do. Am I only showing one? Yep, I'm only showing one. Awesome. There you go. That's JavaScript. Uh, event listeners mixed in with some for loops and some selectors. That's kind of tying some stuff together for you. If it got a little complicated with this example, don't worry. Just mess around with your math example for a while. I'm going to post both of these on CodePen, and I'm going to put that link in the description. Have an excellent day.